This is a, uh, an enhanced version of a presentation that has uh, that Peter's given a couple times. I think once over in Europe and possibly one time at, at one of our conferences or, or down at Tesla Tech, possibly. Uh, Peter has been involved with looking at um, ambient air heat engine type technologies for quite a few years, and uh, Peter is um, a longtime friend and partner of mine. You know, he's known Bedini since the '80s. You know, he worked with or had collaborated with Dr. Robert Adams. He was one of the members of Borderlands going way back with uh, Eric Dollard and, and some of the other well-known names who, you know, a lot of these people are considered the pioneers of what's known as kind of the modern-day free energy movement. And he has authored multiple books. Probably one of the most uh, well-known ones that you probably are familiar with is uh, Free Energy Secrets of Cold Electricity, which is basically his, uh, I guess you could say like a thesis of how he saw the Ed Gray motor working at that time. And uh, uh, the picture on the cover where it has this golden ratio type of uh, discharge on it, it's actually related to some of the stuff that we're going to be demonstrating um, with Eric uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, that was actually a picture from some of his cosmic induction generator type setups. Uh, Peter's been involved with this longer than most people that I've uh, known. And after he came up here to Spokane to work with John Bedini for a year and develop the commercial battery chargers, which pretty much outperformed anything else commercially available, um, Peter and I started uh, A&P Electronic Media in 2008, and it was Lessons in Advanced Perception, uh, which Dr. Olmsted presented on a couple days ago. That was the first book that we uh, uh, produced. And then since then, there's you know 125 plus books and videos. He retired several years ago. Once in a while, he'll kind of come out of retirement to uh, get involved, to kind of help, consult, you know, collaborate with Nick and Netherlands on the Adams Project and so forth. Um, so this this will be a uh, upgraded version of this, and the whole theme today, uh, with the exception of, of uh, uh, Dr. Olmsted's presentation, since um, Nick presented yesterday, is on thermodynamics. And I would highly recommend getting a copy of Peter's presentation uh, from maybe five six years ago or something called Open System Thermodynamics. A lot of the free energy stuff it, it, it does not violate the laws of thermodynamics, and in fact, open systems is the only type of thermodynamics that actually explains natural processes in the universe. And it's not about more going out than going in; it's about more going out than what you put in, which, with any common sense, implies that there's extra input from the environment coming in from somewhere. And that's going to be the theme for today, uh, with Peter's presentation setting the stage for um, uh, actually the Bork engine and even the uh, Jeremiah's Tesla turbine uh, demonstration. So help me welcome Peter Lindemann. Uh, thank you, Aaron, uh, for uh, that introduction. And thank you all for being here in this audience this morning who got up early uh, in the morning to listen to this old man ramble about weird science. And just so you know, depending on how the rest of World War III goes, this may be my last presentation in a public event. But, my, but rumors of my retirement have been an exaggeration so far. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Today my presentation is titled, uh, Methods for Achieving the Ambient Temperature Heat Engine. I've been fascinated by the possibility of this technology for over 30 years, especially because it's the only technology that I know of that can convert solar energy into baseload power for the electricity grid without the need for long-term battery storage. I've also been fascinated by how thoroughly this technology has been ignored. As you probably already know, Nikola Tesla was the first one to imagine such a machine. Today, Nikola Tesla is best known for his Tesla coil and his boundary layer turbine. In my presentation today, I would like to review with you Tesla's profound interest in tapping solar energy by converting the heat of the ambient air into mechanical energy. In June of 1900, 
Tesla published a 30-page article in Century Illustrated magazine titled, The Problem of Increasing Human Energy, with special reference to the harnessing of the sun's energy. This image is the first page of the article as it originally appeared. In this article, after discussing every known source and method for harnessing energy from, from, uh, from other systems, he started proposing new and radical methods for future development. The method he gives the most attention to in this article is what he calls his self-acting engine. The machine as proposed was designed to extract degraded solar energy in the form of heat from the ambient air and drop it into an artificially maintained cold spot so as to produce mechanical energy from the heat extracted. He referred to this as, quote, the ideal way of obtaining motive power. In early 1895, Dr. Carl Lind announced the liquefaction of air by a self-cooling process, demonstrating that it was practicable to proceed with the cooling until liquefaction of air took place. This was the only experimental proof which I was still wanting, that energy was obtainable from the medium in a manner contemplated by me. So what did Tesla find? Carl Lin's work with the liquefaction of air forced him to go back and study all of Boyle's gas laws and the mathematical equations that accompany them. He found that when Joule had calculated the heat work equivalent of a compressed gas, he looked only at the mechanical work and the rise in temperature, and he neglected to account for the simultaneous rise in the pressure of the gas. This oversight had been ignored since 1845. He was sure that correcting this oversight would allow him to accomplish his goal. Here's a photograph of one of Tesla's combined machines, a diagram of the arrangement of parts. In this image, a valvular conduit is regulating the input, compressed air, to the first stage turbine that spins up to high speed as it allows the compressed air to expand and cool as it moves from the outer edge towards the center in a spiral motion. So here is a simplified drawing of, of John Houston's invention which I call the regenerative air-based heat pump. And again, you can see you've got a motor driving the, the compressor, ambient air comes in, we compress it, we, and all we're doing is we're densifying the heat and the air then this, so this is a, um, an, um, an, a heat exchanger here, so we can, we can uh, take heat out here because this is now much hotter than the ambient. And then we de so that lowers the temperature here, then we decompress it again, recovering some of the mechanical energy, which relieves the, the amount of work that the motor has to do and then we fully expand this. Now we have industrial cold here, um, which uh, can be used, and then when we, that absorbs heat from a refrigeration process or something, it still exits out as colder than the ambient. So this is the, the simple understanding in an unambiguous uh, drawing. So here we have the energy efficiency model of the regenerative heat pump, where some of the mechanical energy is recycled and used to offset the total amount of mechanical energy needed to keep the system running. Now the system has three inputs. So remember last, when we were just looking at a regular heat pump, this was just energy returning to the environment. Now we can say, okay, now we've got something um, that mechanical energy that's coming out of the system we can put that back in to offset what it takes us to put in. Now we've got the, the, uh, the heat of the environment coming in, and now our preferred output is refrigeration at a much higher energy discount for what we have to put in. And this is what Aaron was saying. COP is not about you know, just energy in, energy out. It's energy in that we have to put in and total energy out that we're looking for. This is open system thermodynamics. 
is the design of a power plant based on an organic Rankine cycle it, uh, that has been on the Vengeance Power Incorporated website for nine years. Shows basically a, uh, a low, low boiling point um, working fluid here, uh, like ammonia or something like that. Um, you've got uh, a, a basically a, a heat, exp you know, what's, what would you call the evaporator that just runs on low temperature, a uh, waste heat, they, they say waste heat here. Then that comes in and, and drives both sides of the uh, two-sided rotary vane device and um, to turn a generator right here. And then it comes out and is cooled over here to um, reliquify the material and it's put back in the reservoir. So these are the six methods of achieving the ambient temperature heat engine that I have pulled from my files uh, to um, offer for your consideration today. I hope you see the many parallels that exist between these designs and the high probability that all of them can work to one degree or another. Each method has its strengths and weaknesses, but all of them access heat from the ambient environment and convert it into useful mechanical energy. They all run on energy recycling methods and environmental inputs. There are no other mysteries, just standard engineering issues to resolve at this point. Solar energy is the basis of our clean energy future. The ambient temperature heat engine is the only solar technology that is currently capable of providing base load power without long-term storage. I believe it represents the free energy solution we have all been waiting for. Thank you very much.